two. This is Star Talk. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And for this Star Talk Live, we are going to explore transgender visibility today. And I've got Natalia Regan here. Uh, hello, Natalia. She's one of our Star Talk All Stars. And she's uh, an anthropologist who thought deeply about that. And Chuck. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey. How are you? Hey, guys. Hey. So, Transgender Visibility Day. Yes. First of all, who declares these days? Well, that, that's okay. So, uh, the transgender community uh, mm -hmm. did not have a day celebrating those that had worked so hard in the past to become visible. So, in 2009, right. they created, uh, it's actually Transgender Day of Visibility. And so, basically. So it's been around for eight years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's finally, I mean, obviously, with the, with the internet and with Twitter and uh -huh. with Facebook and all these things, it's, it's getting more and more steam. I mean, people, they're. We're talking more about this, these issues, and of course it's Getting more steam. That's a very dated source of energy. Exactly. <laughs> Cole, it's coming back, guys. Coming back. Yeah. Dated thermonuclear fuel. Dated solar power. Okay. Uh, um, so, so just uh, we'll, we'll be taking inquiries from sure. Facebook Live. Yes. But if you just set the stage here, okay. uh, there are people above whatever age. Mm -hmm who were just perplexed by this. Exactly. And people now describing not gender being uh, male or female, but that there's a it's spectrum. It's non-binary, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, humans- Genetically, in terms of your sexual preference, yeah. in terms of every dimension and, 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 that's there. And to be clear, gender and sexuality are two totally different things. Mm -hmm. And gender and, and sex are two totally different things. Right. Gender is generally, it's a, it's a social construct, it's in the brain. Uh, sex is what's going down <clears throat> below the waist, mm -hmm. which can vary. Um, there are uh, people that have, or intersex individuals that have uh, differences. Uh, not, no longer called uh, hermaphrodites? Yeah, it's now generally intersex. Um, there's intersex. also intersex. intersex. Okay. Yeah. okay. But there's also varying um, uh, versions of what that can be. Um, oh. But as far as transgender individuals, um, they basically w wanted to celebrate people in the past that had, had fought for visibility. But mm. to be clear, uh, gender, again, in, in the head, uh, sex below the belt, uh, cisgender, which is what uh, somebody that identifies as their what, what's going on in their brain matches what's going down, down downstairs typically mm, like cisgender yes, cisgender, cisgender. Mm -hmm. uh, transgender is where that does not fit so right. if you're it doesn't match doesn't match right. and it so fits. it just doesn't match exactly <laughs> well it, it fit yeah it, it, uh -huh. in that again that's what we're we're changing our way of looking at it it's mm -hmm. not, no longer a problem it's actually being celebrated mm -hmm. um, you're not you're not a mistake you know right. you are you're just as good as everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also people that identify as non-binary or genderqueer, which mm -hmm. are those that don't feel like they fit in a traditional male-female uh, gender. Or well, they can be either at a different time, right. according yeah. to. So they're whims. fluid, basically. Yeah, exactly. They're gender exactly. fluid. Gender fluid, and gotcha. and that's the thing is, gender people have even uh, identified as certain uh, genders at certain parts of like different parts of their life. You know, By the way, fluid has a f an official physics definition. Uh -huh. It is a substance that takes the shape of its container. Wow. So air is a fluid, as is a liquid uh, in that context. So oh, your fluid, there's a different container here, yeah. I'll fit that. Right. Different container, I'll fit, fit that. that. Right. So Sometimes that. we're different at different points of our yeah, life. That's our great. So we, so we got our questions yeah. coming in. Yeah, well, yeah. questions mm -hmm. are already coming in, right. and I actually left one up because this was the very first question. And before we uh, take any questions, the reason why we do this is so that we can tell you guys that for everything that you want to find Star Talk, there's a place to go called StarTalkAllAccess.com. And that's where we have things that are original content that you can't find anywhere else. We have um, extended content that uh, we had to cut, and so we put it there in full form. It is all commercial free, and you can also find video of the podcast itself that you normally can only find in audio form. All of that is on StarTalkAllAccess.com. And if you subscribe within this week, we will be revealing for only one day at the end of this weekend nude pictures of Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> So please make sure you go, make sure you go and subscribe to StarTalkAllAccess.com and you will be able to see your nude picture of Neil deGrasse Tyson. At least wait till I get my six-pack abs. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. All right, so here, let's question. do our first question. Uh -huh. And the first question comes from Eric Fiore. And Eric says this, please answer how does gender identity and sexual orientation work in the brain? Why can two siblings have so much in common and one prefers their own sex and the other prefers the opposite thanks it's, uh, it's like the million dollar question because uh, there isn't I think a, a clear-cut answer at this point uh, how you know some people say that it's a it's a choice and no it, 
<laughs> oh. We're hearing you live here. Hey. No. Uh, yes. uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so there is an, I, I, I personally do not know the answer to that question because I don't think there is an answer of exactly the mechanism of how one chooses. No, you, you're absolutely right. The reason why you don't know the answer to that question is because we haven't found, found the out. answer yeah. to that question. That is, if we had, we, even though researchers <laughs> are looking at whether or not there is a genetic link to um, your gen, not your your sexuality so yeah. and your preferences, but because uh, even sexuality, like to to be fair and to be clear, is, is on a spectrum, and and people are fluid. You know, people prefer certain things at different times in their life for whatever reason. But doesn't that bring up a, a morality question? Suppose we learn that mm-hmm. there's a part of the brain that generates sexual preference, sure. and there are societal pressures that you should be one way and not another. And then someone says, "I can go in and operate and, and quote, tweak fix that. that." Well, it's like those camps they used to have to try to, well, I think they still have them yeah. to try to change, right. you know, right. kids. Gender or, reorientation. Exactly, centers, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but I mean. That's a moral question. And I also think it's, that's. You, it's, it means society is in denial of who you actually are mm-hmm. and then says, but we can fix that. That that's that's a peculiar world. It is, and I feel like humans are interesting as far as mm-hmm. animals, as a, as a species. We are the only animal that really kind of puts this sort of moral, you know, uh, layer on top of sex and, and and sexual sexual orientation. You know, you don't see a, a chimpanzee struggling like, oh God, I don't know, should I should I ask Steve out? I know I'm a male, but I, you know, you don't see that same sort of. Uh, yeah, dogs don't have that problem like, either. They hump whatever. They hump anything. <laughs> my couch, my leg, Jim, yeah. Beverly. <laughs> What else you got? What and else I got? apologize for all of that. Uh-huh. Um, I'm having trouble. I got one here. Are there instances of oh, brain switching during development later in life? This is Cole Primo is uh, Hi, from, Cole. from Facebook. Are there instances of brain switching during development later in life, or is it something you're born with? As far as I, I mean, mm-hmm. so one of the things that happened a lot in the past was like, say, for instance, if you were dealing with a, uh, if you had a, a child that was intersex, a lot of times parents would might choose at the time of birth mm-hmm. what sex to, uh, you know, you do, or you what gender you would assign. Surgically. 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 And sometimes they make mistakes. And so that child is left to grow up in a, in a body that does not match the brain. So the mistake means they left them with with plumbing that is different from their brain. what their brain's expectation of their plumbing should be. So something that they're doing now is a la- waiting. Waiting until the child can choose what feels right. What age is that? Because we saw pictures of someone who was like 11, right. who, who was born male, but is expressing female in middle school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do we know enough about our gender identity by then? Uh, I, th- I think they can say like the tween ages is when they're really starting to kind of tweens, make, tweens, tweens, yeah, make yeah. that sort of uh, that sort of solid you know choices. But as far as making sort of a gender reassignment or any sort of surgical, I think they're waiting and not doing it that age. That's so, what, that's very young. So, so a minute, are, 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 uh, there's another question. Malcolm Oliver M- Mar Marfan. Malcolm. Malcolm. <laughs> Malcolm. <laughs> we got from Malcolm. So are, are the brains of men and women wired differently? differently. And, and have we found this to be true also for transgender individuals? Because the extent to which we know it's in the brain, maybe we can't figure out where it is or what it's doing, but we can show that it's different. Sure. Right. right? That, that's a base level of information. Mm-hmm. So males and females, uh, as far as sex goes, I, are far more similar than, than dissimilar. Uh, let's okay. put that out there. Like we, we, we want the same things. Oftentimes we strive for the same things. And yes. we... Except you guys are often uh, left disappointed and we're not. <laughs> I mean, that's Hey-o. pretty much how it goes. I'm but so, so sorry. There's things that <laughs> there's things that affect our you know behavior sometimes like like you know different hormones and if mm-hmm. someone has more estrogen and more testosterone in, in their body they're going to behave differently. But I don't think there's been actual studies about the hardwiring of transgender individuals versus those that are not. You've studied other primates, mm-hmm. so yeah. do you see any gender spectrum? Behavior in other primates, you know, I mean, the, the, the bonobo chimps and these right, folks. That see, that's we talked about a little bit, which is really interesting. Uh, bonobos are are funny because they're all about having lots of sex, and uh, they're also female dominant. We talked what about kind of animal, right? <laughs> that's no, all that's, I'm saying. That's how they diffuse tension. Like, say, for instance, there's a piece on the a fruit on the ground. Like, you know, if we have to go, we we want to choose who who gets that piece of fruit. There would be lovemaking, and then we'd probably forget that there was fruit there to begin with. Wow! Yes, whereas they are the most genius <laughs> creatures ever. But let's settle disputes by making. I'll make love for it. <laughs> let's let's love it out. Sword fight. Let's but, love it out, bitches. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> but 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 what we should say, one of the things that makes bonobos different from their cousins chimpanzees, female dominant social group. 
Mm-hmm. So the females are in charge, which means, hey, maybe if we let a woman be in charge of the United States. I guarantee States, you. I don't know. The, no, I'm not I saying. I guarantee you <laughs> if the answer to uh, conflict resolution is let's make love, we would give over the power <laughs> to females, okay? I'm just letting you know. It might be hugs. We got to, you know, and it's got to be consensual. No, 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 no. That's not the right joke. The right joke is if you let a woman be president, She'll be tweeting all day about everything she feels about. <laughs> <laughs> then I think we have a woman oh, president, right, guys. Right, right, right. Uh, let's let's go another one. Uh, so uh, Tony Allen, is there a particular age when someone realizes their orientation? Is there a, an average age where you can then say, pretty much you know where you're coming from and where you're going? By I then? mean, I think it, it has a lot to do with just individuals, but I think a lot of people. I mean, I, I, my orientation. I'm assuming they mean sexual orientation. Yes. Um, not how they feel as. as Gender wise, um, yeah, what people had talk, yeah, 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 people talk about it as, as early as like three, five, four, six, or five, three. you know, I, like knowing. I have, I have several friends some, who, yeah, yeah. who was telling me, like, I was four years old and I knew for a fact, you know, like four years old, four years yeah. old, they were wow. like, and I said to a friend of mine, I'm like, okay, how so did you, I said, how did you yeah. know that you, how did you know you were gay when you were four? And he said, let me ask you this, when you were four, did you like women? And I was like, you know, I absolutely did. <laughs> I knew I knew then that he was like, it's the exact I didn't same know thing. When I was four. Yeah. I was, you didn't know when you yeah, were four. That's kid. because you were too busy loving science, yeah, Neil. And this is what's gonna, I'll, I'll say this and I'll wrap it up real quick. But uh, when yeah, I was yeah, we, when we, I was eight, I thought I was gay because I actually thought I was attracted to women at one point. I was like, oh my God, that means I, I didn't realize that there was a spectrum. Mm-hmm. You know what okay. I mean? And now that visibility and now that we're seeing that you know, Very kids courageous are not, people. People courageous coming out people. and, and so showing that there are alternatives and that this is not a spectrum, uh-huh. then you know. It's okay, and it's, it's safe. Wherever and you are, it's okay. You're fine. If you fall on that spectrum, good for you. We have a Facebook uh, live viewer called Albert Einstein who says, nice shirt, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little narcissistic, hey. don't you think, hey, Albert, Albert Einstein? There you go, buddy. All right, we got, we got to wrap this up. up. This was quick, quick. This was a quick one, yeah. Quick and fast, but uh, transgender day of visibility. Yes. Uh, that, that's new to me, even though yeah. it's been around eight years. So thank you to um, Laverne Coxes and you know all the activists out there. Follow them on Twitter. Right, right. Excellent. Thanks for that suggestion. So uh, Natalia Reagan, thanks for thanks for ha- be, for doing this. And Chuck, always good to have you here. Right. We got to sign out on Facebook Live. They give us like ten minutes at most for this. Ah. And so uh, yeah, we we will find us in the universe. Yeah, <laughs> and on Star. StarTalkAllAccess.com. You got it. StarTalk signing out.